right guys, I'm down here at GT Auto Garage where we're going to show you a pretty cool uh, video about how to install a Zytronix E85 E-Flex sensor. The reason that we've even come to doing this is because one of our future videos, which will be released in a few days maybe, um, is going to actually show the difference between the types of fuels that we've got. So we want to do a comparison between 98, uh, E85 and race fuel that we've got from Martini Racing. In order to be able to do that though, it's important to be able to tell your computer and your car exactly what the percentage of E85 you've got. So to be able to do that, we've picked up these Zytronix uh, kits. Now essentially what this will do is it gives you a display that actually shows the percentage of ethanol content in your fuel. So this has an output that can go straight into your car's computer and it actually tells the computer. So it's not just the driver that knows what the E85 content is. The computer can know what the E85 content is and it will compensate based on your uh, percentage of ethanol. So here we've got uh, the kit. Comes with everything you pretty much need. Basically everything we've got laid out here is all you'll need to install this kit here today. I'll show you what we've got. Now this is the, the brains of the unit. Okay, so that's just a sensor and essentially it just tells the, uh, the computer what uh, percentage of ethanol content there is in the fuel. Um, as I said, this can actually output directly to your computer. This car is our Time Attack 180SX. Um, it's been in here getting a new gearbox um, because we broke the old one, so it's now got a close ratio gearbox. And um, we're going to use this as our demo car to work out the difference between 98, E85 and Martini racing fuel. Fortunately, this has already got a Haltech ECU, which has an analog input that allows you to put different sensors, um, different signals uh, into the computer. So it can actually put out the signal from this, which is a zero to five volt signal. Um, it's an analog output. So zero being 98 octane, no ethanol, um, and five volts will be saying 100% ethanol. Um, so this car's got a Haltech Platinum Pro, which has plenty of analog inputs that we can use. We're going to use one of those spare analog inputs to talk to this sensor. So the other things that come in this kit, okay, that's the computer for it, and we've got the display. And that's a digital display that lights up and it'll show you the ethanol content. So it'll say E85 or E90 or E50 or whatever the percentage may be at the time. So we just need to solder this in. Um, it's pretty easy to, to do. We should probably knock this over in half an hour. Just need to have a new fuel line. Uh, essentially what we're going to do is tee this into the existing fuel delivery system. Run some, fire, run some wires through the firewall. Plug it straight into the computer. And um, from there on it's up to Dave from GD Auto Garage to change the tuning of this car to compensate for the signals that are coming out of this 85 sensor. So we can get to doing that now. Okay, so as I said, we're going to be installing the Zytronix uh, E85 ethanol content analyzer on our time tag car. This is a 180SX S chassis. It's got an S15 front. It's been a very good performer in the time attack series. Um, we have ditched the SR20 and we've put an RB26 out of an R32 GTR Skyline. It's not stock, as you can see. It's actually a built motor. Uh, so it's got forged pistons. It has a GT30 turbo on it, a six boost manifold. Uh, but it's got a AccuSump, semi dry sump setup, and um, oil coolers and everything like that, as you'd expect for a normal time attack car. This was put together here at GT Auto Garage. And um, today it's going to be pretty interesting to see the difference that actually is made between 98, E85 and Martini race fuel. Typically we run this on the Martini race fuel, but for the purpose of this exercise, we're gonna try those three different fuels and actually see what performs better, what's better value for money and what average person can expect. This is not a highly tuned motor, it has standard cams, it doesn't even have cam gears. So it's just a, a very basic package, very reliable and great sort of streeting um, racetrack use. So. We're going to get on to like, showing you how to install that controller, um, which will start with just cutting into the fuel lines. So we're going to end up cutting into the return, which is this one down the bottom, not the top one. We're going to cut this in and it's going to be teed into this. So that's where our 
uh, Zitronix controller is going to go. And that's on the return. So make sure you end up, when you install it, just put it onto the return line. All right, so now we just need to cut into our fuel line. And we will put the controller onto here. Now, typically, we would be using speed flow barbs or something along those lines to make sure that they don't pop off. Unfortunately, I was a dumbass and I left them in the other car. So I'm just gonna to have to go roll with this for the time being. It's only going on the dyno. So before we take it out of the track, obviously we have to do it properly. So for the time being, we're gonna be putting this in here. So obviously this will just end up going in like this. And then we wire it in. We're gonna run some conduit through the firewall and uh, that's pretty much it. We just need to run the, the power lines through to the, the Haltech ECU. And um, that's pretty much how easy it is. We just have to find somewhere to mount this and we're done. Okay, so now we've got the controller in line. So what we've got, we've got um, the aftermarket industry surge tank feeds into the poly fuel pump, up the car, into the HKS fuel rail, out of the HKS fuel rail, into this turbo smart fuel pressure regulator. On the return line from the fuel pressure regulator, we have the Zitronics content analyzer, and then back, this is going back into the fuel tank on the return line. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to wire it in so we just plug this into the, the loom and we're going to run this through the firewall and we solder it into the ECU and we're done. We've fed this through the firewall now. Now all we have to do is actually, we've plugged it in already, didn't show that because it's quite a bit of a squeeze at the moment. Now we just need to solder it into the uh, inputs on the ECU. This is the, the gauge. I haven't got anywhere to mount it just yet. So it can sort of float around for the time being. All right, so now we'll just get into the soldering. So now we have the moment of truth to see whether my uh, dodgy wiring job. Now, like, I would like to express that this was just a very quick hack job. So this was just done so that we can quickly get this done before it puts on the dyno. This is not the ideal way of installing it. This, this literally took 10 minutes. So we will go back and do this all properly again a little bit later. I just wanted to say that disclaimer now. There are a few things that we needed to do that haven't been done yet, like the barbs on the, um, the controller itself. And this isn't wired in permanently yet either. It's just here temporarily. So. And we have liftoff. Let's see what our ethanol content is. E85. There you go. So it's working. Now this will vary depending on how much um, ethanol content. So there we go. It says E86 actually. So the oh, E85. So it's, uh, it's monitoring it right now. It's running the fuel through the, uh, the return lines. And this is what the, the ethanol reading is. All right, let's get to dynoing it and see which fuel makes more power. So anyway, we've got the controller installed in the car now. It took all of about 10 minutes to do. As I did mention, this is only a hack job just to get it done temporarily. We will go over this again and do it all properly shortly. I don't know what that was. We'll go back over this and do it all again properly. Um, we need to put some barbs on the uh, feed and return lines for the Zitronix controller. And we also need to 
put some insulation on the wiring and um, get that all sorted out. But for the now, this will work for what we need to do. In another episode you'll be able to watch, we're actually going to compare the results that different fuels make on this car. So we're going to be comparing 98 versus the 85 and versus Race Martini. And so, actually, I'm going to cut in. To see that, make sure you click up in this gonna corner. There, Where are we going to put it? Over I there? don't know. There? There? Just dance. Dance for No, no. <laughs> It's going to be this corner. Over that corner. Yeah. All right, cool. So click on that. You can watch that next video. We're really keen to see what the results of this are. Um, so yeah, if you ever need to install one of these controls, hopefully this is of some help to you.